The Bear, Season 2, Episode 6, Thoughts. This episode is called Fishes. And yeah, spoilers for the this episode as well as the ones leading up to it. And another episode I absolutely love. Long one, though. Anyway, um, before I dive into it, the top link will enable you to don donate to the SAG After Strikers. Please do so. And then there are some links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dive in. So, yeah, we see that the, the Berzato siblings call each other bear. And, yeah, there's the thing about, you know, Sugar really wants to ask, you know, Donna, are you okay? And the others are certain that that's a bad idea. And, you know, it, it is the kind of thing, you know, like, obviously Sugar means it well. She, she isn't saying that it's some failing, but Donna doesn't perceive it that way. She hears... You're a mess. You know, Sugar might as well look her right in the eye and say, Fuck you. You're terrible. You're, you're not a good housewife. You can't feed your own family. You know, that's what she hears. And, yeah, you know, I, I thought they did a really good job. You know, Sugar legitimately does, she is worried about her. And that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, the, the her two brothers are like, what you know she'll be fine you know if we you know yeah it's better if we don't express this concern let's see and, and you know to, to be clear I'm not saying that every woman you know I'm not saying that every woman has to be an amazing housewife or something but that's the the those are the values that Donna has internalized and yeah, she can't ask for help. You know, near the end of the episode, she she says that she, you know, she expresses the, the the certain point of view that her family doesn't care about her, and and it's that you know people are constantly like walking into the kitchen. Not all of them, but um, several of them are like, "Can I help?" And she says, "No." You know, there there's. There's really no winning in this entire situation. You know, everyone... You know, she she's asking for them to show that she care, that they care, but the way that they do that upsets her. You know, so either they don't do that in order to try not to upset her, or they do, and she doesn't hear it as concern. She hears it as criticism. And this is something that a lot of people, you know, the, the the fact that the patriarchy doesn't only hurt women, I I think, I feel like it should be enough that it hurts women for us to try to fight against it, but some people need to hear, yeah, it hurts men as well. You know, like, no nobody in this family is completely able to just be be calm and just enjoy the holidays everyone is constantly on edge because of these you know toxic these the you know these expectations that are not completely reasonable and are just you know yeah people feel so bad about not living up to them and yeah, there's uh, several conversations, you know, between Carmi and Mike this episode, and the, the um, what's the word, you know, the, the conflict that we've already, you know, we know from other episodes, it, it you know, there's some direct con confrontations in this episode, and yeah, you know, we start, we, we get a couple of blissfully calm minutes outside, and then the episode goes inside and we spend the, you know, maybe an hour with this family who are constantly bickering. And I do quite appreciate, you know, recently we've gotten like, oh, you know, X amount of weeks before opening, and then it's a, for here, for this one it says 256, which... Yeah, you know, 
about five years, for, so, you know, placing us in the overall timeline. So. Are, are we in? Was that a business slot? Let's see. You know, may, maybe more business deals should be... A lot of business partners absolutely hate each other. Maybe, you know... Fuck the handshake. Maybe, maybe you know, throw a fork at one another or something. I'm obviously joking. I don't. I, I shouldn't have to say that, but some people don't get it. Love seeing Jamie Lee Curtis uh, here. Like they, they really did. Just like find. I, I feel like for this show, like they found you know some of the best actors they could. Some some really excellent comedians and just. Yeah, you know, fantastic. Um, I'm so glad she's still working. Like, can, can we just appreciate, she's been working since 1978. Uh, she's been working for more than six, I, I guess it's 65. More than 60 years, 65 years, I guess it is by now. And she's still so freaking good. And it's actually, recent years has seen some of her best performances. You know, this episode, we have... Deidre Bobiedra in Everything Everywhere All at Once. Uh, you know, she was great again in the Halloween H40 trilogy. Just fantastic, you know. And and yeah, she she continues, you know, she's she's funny, she's great for drama, just yeah. And let's see. Right, and and there's some, you know, so so yeah, briefly, you know, in in addition to the the returning cat, you know, this this has John Mulaney, the the stand-up comedian, and I want to uh, Bob Odenkirk. I know he's done comedy. I feel like is he the one I'm thinking of? The the um. I, th I feel like he was the he he was one of the people doing that um, that Ben Stiller show. What was it called? Oh right, the Ben Stiller show. You know he was fantastic on there, uh, and yeah, I'm really really glad he's he's still working. Just you know, incredibly funny, and turned out he's really good at drama as well. You know, back then it was mostly the comedy, you know, but, yeah, um, and, uh, let's see, yeah, and this one also has Theodore fact, I don't, if I had to guess from the, from the IMDb, it kind of looks like he's a comedy person, but yeah, you know, fa really, really great to see that and you know the the let's see um oh right right yeah and and um Richie and Michael M Mikey tell Carmi that they saw Claire you know which yeah we the the audience have already met Claire in, you know, in the present day. Right, and Jillian Jacobs was on Community, so she's also, she at least does some comedy. Yeah, um, let's see, and it, I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's simultaneously heartening and heartbreaking to see Tiffany and um, Richie get along so well, knowing how it ends up. You know, they, they do clearly actually love each other at this point. Like, Richie's still a fuck-up, no doubt about that. But there's actually, you know, bef yeah, before, the, back when she was still pregnant, they did love each other. The, the fuck-ups of, of Richie ended up destroying that, but there was a time, you know. Um, right, I really love the, the decision, you know, to, to shoot this with so much film grain, like there's really, 
you know, you can you can pretty much count pores on faces. You can see every individual stubble on John Mulaney's face. Just, you know, in part, it's probably this sort of, you know, home video flashback kind of feel. But it just works so well. And let's see. The, right, I, I like that Stevie, like, he's not... He understands that the the facts, what they're suggesting, is probably not gonna go. But you know, it's like it's interesting. You're you every time I come here, you guys have an interesting thing to tell. You know, so that's yeah. And um, right, and and Richie and Jimmy talk about the idea of Jimmy giving him getting him a job, and you know, it's. <laughs> Yeah, you know, later we realize Richie already told Tiffany that it's, you know, already in the, you know, it's it's already handled. There's no doubt that the that he is, you know, he already got the job. So now he has to talk Jimmy into making that actually happen. Great to see Sarah Paulson as as cousin Michelle. Just, you know, she's one of those actors like you really just just you know give her some material and just unleash her and yeah she's on top form just really really great to see here and and I gotta say as someone like when I think Sarah Paulson like the first her first role that pops into my head is in Martha Marcy May Marlene where she's this very uptight upper class very careful, very, you know, highly educated. And here she's like, oh, motherfucker, and just, you know, not saying that you can't say that and be, like, educated, but it's not necessarily the most upper-class thing to, you know. And she, yeah, she's completely convincing in both roles. And, yeah, we learn why Nat is being called Sugar. I really love that the facts are wearing the exact same kind of outfit. Let's see. Did, now, did they did they color coordinate before leaving the house? Or did they just both have the exact same idea? Anyway. Um, let's see. Yeah, and, and Carmi and Mikey talk in a very long take, really excellent decision. And it's this thing of, you know, Carmi's like, okay, I'm going to get the salt. Um, bro, can I, can I get past? Like, I got to get mom the saltines, you know. And we're sitting there waiting any second now. Any second she's going to scream, where's the fucking saltines, you know. And, and just, yeah. And they're talking about, you know, and Carmi's like, why won't you let me? work at big you know the original beef or whatever it's called you know the the and and yeah like legitimately Mikey it's not that he doesn't care you know it's it's more complicated than that but of course you know to to Carmi it doesn't feel like that um Right, I, I like, you know, Carmi tells Mikey three things about Copenhagen, and one of them is that it's beautiful, and yeah, absolutely true. And <laughs> I don't know exactly how they came about. I mean, basically, somehow, someone got the idea, hey, let's have Sarah Paulson act out and am I the asshole like straight up that's that's what the you know the the uh, is it Steve who said you know, someone is like um are you sure you're not the asshole no I'm not the fucking asshole she's the asshole you know it just yeah and I love that everyone warns Steve against going into the kitchen. Like everyone's, no, please, this is not. No, no, mm -mm, you don't. You don't have to. It's not gonna go well, you know. And finally, he does, and like Donna explodes. She goes nuclear on him, and he's okay. Okay, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. And yeah, then it gets very unpleasant with the, you know, Donna. 
threatening suicide, and I gotta say, for the rest of the episode, I was legitimately worried that she was gonna carry it out, so, yeah, that was, it was, it was very much a relief when the episode ends and all she did was crash the fucking car through the house, Jesus Christ. And apparently, Mikey's been telling the same story a million times, so Lee gets frustrated, you know, and, and, you know, Mikey points out, well, you've heard it a million times, but they haven't heard it at all, you know, and Lee says, you know, f finish, you know, finishing a story, how about finish a business plan, and just, yeah. And Pete shows up, and he brought an eighth fish, which just, like, I'd like to, I, I've said in, in videos I've done on other episodes, I relate a lot to Pete. Like, of all the characters on the show, he is, without a doubt, the one I most resemble. I don't think I've ever fucked up like that. I'd like to think that I never in my life... Fuck. And they, they bullied, you know, everyone bullies him. He's trying to say, ah, oh, you know, the, so many nice, you know, there's, there's more lights out than last year. What, did you count? Oh, I mean, I, I think the, the, your neighbors, they died. <laughs> Let's see, and, um, let's see. Yeah, and, and Carmen talks, you know, um, Michelle talks to Carmen about the idea of him coming to live with her in New York. And I think, I mean, that did end up happening, didn't it? And then he's he stayed there for a while, and then Mikey suicided, and then, you know, Carmi went to to Chicago to pick up the pieces. I really appreciate that, like, of, for all the times that Jimmy fucks over Richie, which, to be fair, Richie is a fuck-up, this one time he actually goes along with the lie. Let's see. And... Yeah, I gotta say, when, when you know, Donna tells Carmi, you know, I'll just give me one minute. I really thought this is this is going to be it. She's going to, you know, do we have a problem and she says his full name which means he's in trouble. And you know, later she does it with with sugar as well. And Mikey starts, you know, he he throws like yeah, he th he throws a fork at Lee, and, and he's like, uh, "Hey, uh, do you do you need that fork?" And he's like, oh, please, please don't throw it. Please don't throw it. You know, just and Lee criticizes him. You know, points out the actual, which is of course, you know, and and it is very much this thing. You know, Mikey, you know, is is insecure, and Lee knows how to, you know. We, we don't know the details, but I'm guessing Lee is substantially more successful than Mikey, and, yeah. Um, I really loved the, the John, John Mulaney, you know, giggles, and he's like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just, I, I giggle when I get, you know, when I, when I get nervous, and, and Mikey's like, no, giggle, giggle, you know, just, which I feel like John Mulaney wrote that joke himself because it's very reminiscent of the the you know he's he's made jokes that are very similar to that you know and and in in spider-verse they actually used another one of his jokes the the thing with you know he's his palms get really sweaty so he'll he'll shake someone's hand and say oh i just washed my hands that's why they're wet so yeah that was <laughs> And and it is also just he's he's he sells it he really does, and yeah you know the the scene really is about male fragility it is this thing of you know like 
Lee and Mikey, neither of them are willing to back down. Neither of them feel like... Because that's not, you know, the, in, in their mind, the manly thing to do is to assert yourself. And Mikey, you know, he, he doesn't really have any verbal ammo, so he gets physical. And it's not, you know, it's, it's the... And, you know, at one point he's like, ah, I see, I made you flinch. Like, he's a, a you know, middle school bully or something, you know. In his, like, his maturity level is still there, you know. And, and Lee, you know, I, and I do want to say, I do understand where both of them are coming from, you know. Lee refuses to just, it, it, for, for both of them, if just, if one of them would just back the fuck down, and everyone around them is like saying, please just, you know, put down the, Mike, put down the fork. Lee, stop antagonizing him, you know, they just, both of them keep going, because they feel like they're not a real man if they let the other one win, you know, it's this, you know, yeah, toxic masculinity. And really appreciate the extreme close-ups on faces. And finally, Donna joins. And Steven says, Grace, and... <laughs> Did he put down the fork? He's still holding the fork. <laughs> and I, I appreciate that on, you know, more than once he says, I think we should listen to each other. It's very important that we listen you know, just, it's, yeah. I guess he watched everything everywhere all at once, too. I'm not gay, like you all keep asking me. <laughs> I don't know if that's, I, yeah, I think, I think that is, uh, I, th I think John Mulaney has said that people think he's, he's gay. Let's see. And, you know, yeah, so he, he finishes saying, saying grace, and Mikey's like, that was beautiful. Not fork disarmingly beautiful, but beautiful nonetheless. And then Sugar asks Donna, are you okay? And everything just goes haywire, and Michelle really puts her foot in it as well. Just, yeah. And again, I really worried that, okay, I guess this is when Donna does it, but, you know, she, yeah, she drives the car, and, and yeah, Mikey throws the fucking fork, and Lee goes up to, to punch him, and, yeah, the, as, as the, you know, after the car drove in, and, and Donna's, like, cackling like a maniac in there, I kept thinking, you're gonna need to break through the window. You're not going to get her to stop. You just, you know, grab a heavy object, smash the car window, that'll, you know, that's that's going to be necessary. And the episode ends on Carmi staring at one of the food things and sugar, um, like, shell-shocked. And, yeah, um, really, really solid episode. Just... I really hope we get to see at least some of these characters again in in later episodes. You know, so yeah, just um, I think that might be pretty much everything. I barely talked about the facts. I I honestly, it was very fun seeing them try to. You know, I if we haven't seen that much of Theodore Fack Ted. Uh, you know, it's mostly been Neil Fack, but you know, for for as much fun as one Fack is, two is just even better. Like them trying to sell the the you know the, they're trying yeah they're trying to, to to explain the game to to Stevie. And also, like, trying to sell the, the baseball cards and just... And bickering with each other, which is not the best... Like, I feel like that's probably one of the first things... I haven't gone to business school, 
but I feel like that's probably the first thing they tell you. Do not actually start an argument during a sales pitch. That is not going to go well. You know, you want to keep them focused on what you can provide and like the time frame and maybe how little you need from them. Do not get them doubting how serious you are, how much you have your shit together. Those are not the things you want them to be thinking about. And the facts don't just like do it once and like, you know what, whatever. No, they just keep going. Very, very fun. Um, yeah, I think that might be it. Um, I, I do continue to really enjoy seeing John Bernthal and Eben Moss backrack share scenes. Like, it is very surreal to me to watch this after seeing them also, you know, sharing a number of scenes in, in Marvel Netflix Punisher. You know, just... But, but I can understand, you know, they have great chemistry. They're really, really good in scenes together. You know, whether they're playing, you know, friends since childhood like here, or I don't think I want to give away exactly what they play in The Punisher, but yeah, just fantastic. Um, that is, that is everything. So, yeah, um, the next episode I cover will be sometime next week. So, yeah, until then... Am I okay?